Okay, listen, I know that you've been in the contemplation stage and you've been thinking about taking the leap for quite some time now. Maybe that's what led you to my channel in all the hours and sleepless nights of research that you might have been doing. But one of the, this is one of the things that I know for sure is that no amount of research or upskilling is going to help you get started to do what you want to do with being your own boss or taking that autonomy over how you want to design your work life through your business if you don't manage some of the self-imposed limiting beliefs that are actually preventing you from starting at all. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing three particular common limiting beliefs that a lot of us struggle with, myself included, when I first got started, and how we can really reframe how to not let some of these fears get in the way of our true desires and the dreams that we have for our lives. Escape the nine to five and create your path to freedom. Thank you so very much for joining me today. If you're new here, I'm Lydia Lee. I'm a work reinvention strategist and my sweet spot is helping you find your sweet spot of what kind of business you should be starting, how to design that business to fit the lifestyle goals that you hope to achieve for yourself. But most importantly, really to utilize and leverage the gifts you already have, the approach that you have with your work and the impact that you really wanna make with your work and truly, share the value that you already have inside of you and solve valuable problems that people are willing to pay for. So you're in the right channel. If you're someone that is very interested in creating that autonomy for yourself and creating a business or a freelance career or a consulting career, an independent career that allows you to have more time freedom and have more lifestyle freedom that you really have been seeking for. So today I want to talk about the three most common limiting beliefs that we have to eradicate in order for us to actually take the leap into the possibility of something beyond the nine to five existence. Now, this is obviously coming a lot from my own experience of going through transition, but in the last almost seven years now of supporting individuals to go through that career transition, start businesses that they can be proud of and contribute amazing things into the world, I know that these three things come up over and over again for some of the smartest and most intelligent people on the planet that I've been working with. So know that you're not alone. But in a lot of ways, society have taught us to go through our careers, right? And to gain stability in a particular type of trajectory that may no longer to apply to some of the values that we may hold true to ourselves. And we live in a beautiful time in the world right now where alternative careers and things that are not done in a cubicle office, right, or a, const a construct of that nine to five structure uh, needs to be done anymore, right, to be able to earn the kind of living that you dream to have. So I want you to know today that right now, right this second, if you're watching this video, you are already poised to really transition your skills, all the training that you've accumulated in the number of years that you've been in your career and your professional field, and that passion that is brewing inside of you that wants to be turned into a lucrative business so that that gives you that time freedom and lifestyle freedom that you've always been wanting is right there for you. And perhaps you've overcomplicated the steps necessary to get started very likely because of the sort of fear mongering monsters that are in our mind, because in a lot of ways as humans, we crave security and we crave stability. And when we are seeking for something that's different, right? When we want to do something different in our lives. It's really easy to feel uncertain and unstable. And sometimes we take that as a bit of a true sign, right? That we may not need to continue. And so I want to be able to support you in this video today to take a look at some of these limiting beliefs a little bit closer and start to question and challenge whether or not these things are holding you back and how to really look at that differently so that you can be inspired to actually keep taking the next step forward for your life. 
Now, again, if you're new here, you may want to make sure that you subscribe to this channel by clicking the subscribe button and that little bell icon uh, that looks, you know, that looks like a, a bell <laughs> and that really basically notifies you every time a new video comes out, which is, by the way, every Wednesday uh, on this channel, that's really going to help you. I put all my greatest resources in this channel in order to support you in your transition to go from employee to entrepreneur, but also to design and grow a business that you love. So the first limiting belief that I want to talk about today is one that I know is probably on your mind today. And that is the fear of money, fear of giving up the security of a job that has paid the bills for you, that you've climbed the corporate ladder to achieve. And that financial worry of, am I going to be able to replace my income if I was to start a business of my own or to strike out independently on my own? So as I mentioned, we as humans want to default to comfort because that is Comfort is comfortable, right? It's familiar. And we sort of have this notion where we need a, a level of guarantee for us to be able to move forward. And it's really funny, like if you think about the traditional trajectory of what we've been told that we have to do in order to get a great career and afford that mortgage and head for that pension plan, right? In traditional work ways has been to stack up the debt for student loans, right? Which I just finally paid off like three years ago. <laughs> and we never question that people go into hundreds and thousands of dollars of student loan debt. And they don't question that that's not a guarantee either to get that job, to get that career, or even be passionate enough to continue that career in the long term. But yet we follow it because everybody else around us is doing that thing. Why I'm talking about that piece of the concept of, you know, following the trajectory of tradition is because that, even though that is actually not really guaranteed, it kind of feels guaranteed because other people have done it and there's something to follow. So part of that is actually being able to bring on a new reality of what is possible for you by talking and meeting other people. And hopefully in this channel, you get a lot more of that, that reality check of what is possible out of the cubicle, right? Or the nine to five. Um, and you can start to really see that there are actually lots of people having independent careers, the gig economy, the new economy, right? The future of work is filled with people that are striking out on their own. And yes, you may have to learn some new things and be, be courageous in your own skill sets to do so, but it doesn't mean that you can't, right? So that's the first thing I kind of want to talk about. And when we reinvent ourselves, nothing is really certain. I think when you believe that you have something different you want to do with your life and your career, right? All the great stuff of what is possible for you is on the other side of that fear, the uncertainty, and that discomfort. That's part of the process. So embracing that and going, that shouldn't stop me. And I can keep on feeling the feelings, but knowing that as I continue to evaluate my options, keep exploring and experimenting what can be possible for me, I can reach a different sense of what could be truth, truth for me, right? What it could be reality for me. And in a lot of ways, we take a look at our financial security as the only thing that we need to make sure that we guarantee before we start anything at all. But the truth is that you can absolutely still keep your security. Now, in my own story and the stories of majority of my clients, 99% of clients that I work with don't give up a secure job to pursue their dream. They're actually doing it in conjunction of ensuring that safety and security is still there for them. Actually, that's the best place to start is when you are in a secure job, when you are in the protection of a, a, a reliable salary, right? That can help fund your dreams and buy you some time so that you can do this thing a bit like a side hustle, exploration on the weekends, right? Whatever time that you can block off for yourself in order to do this while working full time. It's not all or nothing. I know sometimes some of these, you know, gurus out there might say to you, just got to get it done and do it all and be brave. And sometimes it's easier for certain people than others. And if you're a calculated risk kind of person like I am, I kind of need to do it in conjunction with security and, and safety. And so while you're in a, in, in a full-time job, this is the best time to actually be exploring ideas, exploring what is alternative ways that you can earn a living beyond your, your job that is actually going to be done in a much safer zone and let you take more risks than if you were just to give up your job, you know, in a dramatic fashion and then just start doing something and hope that you'll be brave, right, for it all. And the other part I want to talk about with the fear of worry or the fear of 
money and security is that we always focus on the worst case scenario, right? We think about the fact that we might be homeless if we don't get this done right, so we don't start at all, right? We're comparing ourselves to other people, right? We are all, always thinking about the negative part of not making it versus like, you know, the worst case scenario, right? Versus actually tailoring our mind and our focus and our thought process towards the best case scenario. What do we want to be working towards? What are some of the things and conditions that we need to set for our lives in order to feel good about moving forward? If you focus your attention on that, then those are much more practical steps to get ready and think about rather than um, snowball right into that negative thought of what's the worst thing can happen, right? Focus on the best case scenario, what you really wanted to design and build and use that as your focal point, right? As your North Star, rather than some of the negative things that aren't helpful and actually inspiring at all for you to take your leap. The second limiting belief that we have is not believing we have all the skills already, that we have to learn more, we have to take more courses, we have to do more trainings, we have to spy on more blogs and be a part of more email newsletters to get inspired in order to start our very own thing. And like I said in the beginning of this video, very likely if you've been in the workforce, if you've been working and you've been valued, you've been paid to do something, you are in a position right now that are, is very ready to start something of your very own. You may have to switch around your employee mindset to more of an entrepreneur mindset of creating rather than be told what to do, right? But that is something you can absolutely be doing as you explore your ideas. So you have value to give at this moment in time, value that isn't given to other people if you don't start at all. There are many people in the world that needs the knowledge, the expertise, the experience you've already accumulated, the solutions that you're really familiar with to support people on. And so instead of thinking of what skills do I really have to get started right now, because skills are really just tools, right? We want to understand for you what, how you will utilize these tools, these skills, these know-hows, these knowledge bases you've collected in order to solve valuable problems for other people. So the starting point for you, right, to take a leap, really is to think about what problems do I feel called to solve for people? What gaps in my industry that I've been working in or the people and audiences that I'm familiar to help, where are areas that I can really contribute value, right? And if you can focus on problems to solve and value to provide, then you're gonna be less hung up on doing skills assessments, right? And all those things that you believe could have one of the biggest answers for you when the answer very likely in how you're experiencing your own world right now is already there. And that is actually where the answers are. What business to start next, what ideas to go after, what ideas to explore is very likely around the environment you are already in. So my advice is to stop comparing yourself to other people's businesses and start focusing on what you can provide, what problems you can solve, what skill sets you wanna to bring to the table that can actually help you to become more independent faster than trying to fit into a mold or a blueprint or a box that someone else has created for you. Now, this is one of the biggest stages of work that a lot of people need support in, by the way. Okay, and this is why this year I'm op I actually have opened up uh, a two hour session that's called the sweet spot session. You can find it on the one of the cards popping up or a link uh, below this video of what I do in the sweet spot session. You know, a big result that comes out from this intensive is that I help you as a guide to really look at those three prongs of definition of a sweet spot, which is your skill set, which is your mastery. Right. Second piece is your deep interest. What are you passionate? to actually contribute towards what problems do you really want to solve in the world? Who are you really solving it for and why? Right. And the third part of a sweet spot is your impact. Like how can you, how can you see that your work has a ripple effect towards a transformation, a cause, right. Or a global issue that you really want to contribute your work towards and having all those three pieces really gathered together to give you that sweet spot of your direction of focus of work will help you to identify the best business to start, what is the approach that you would do if you would start to start this business, even if there's other people that do what you do and what you can really offer right in that sweet spot that's going to earn you that income that people uh, and the value that people are really seeking for and will pay for. So if you're interested in that session, click on that link and maybe I can help you get to that a lot faster than doing it on your own. All right. The third limiting belief that we must overcome and eradicate in order to take our leap is waiting 
for that bright idea to fall on our lap and we continue waiting for years to come. Now, many people that come end up coming to work with me have gone through many years of the sleepless nights and the constant Googling, the constant research of what it is that they think would be a bright idea because very likely behind that you know, that, that thinking process, right, of I need to f wait for the big, big idea before I start any moves, is really the root of it is the fear of failure. We're fearing of making a mistake. We fear of uh, being judged if we made a mistake. We fear that we can't make it if we ever were to, um, you know, prove to ourselves that we make mistakes. And the truth of the matter is everything that you're going to be doing right in your career, even if you stayed in corporate or whatever life changes that you are currently experiencing will require you to make mistakes. And so that is something we have to embrace as part of the journey so that you don't think that anything wrong has happened to you or that is going to happen. Nothing has gone wrong either. There are so many insights on our mistakes and whatever it is that didn't work out where we can really reframe what we learn from them and do something better every single time. I'm also going to give you a link with a card popping up as well about a video that I uh, filmed not long ago about how to reframe our mistakes so that we learn big lessons from it and utilize those lessons to make better decisions and better choices our next round and to keep going because that's actually the only way to get to your brightest and best idea. So as you're, if you are stuck here, right, in waiting for that Gandhi moment <laughs> of this moment you wake up in the morning and the stars are aligned and a great idea is just perfect for you at this point in your life, um, instead of doing that, I want you to really dig into what ideas you already have in terms of what I already talked about, right? What issues around your world, what problems in your industry, what gaps of opportunity you can actually be solving right now in your world and dig into the process by trying and experimenting with some of these ideas, right? Failing, testing, doing it again is part of the process. And if you keep waiting, you'll just never get to that next stage, that next level of clarifying right? A confident idea for yourself. So testing it through again, a side hustle while you're still working full time, right? Testing it by actually figuring out what it is that you may want to do, how it is that you might want to approach particular solutions right now can really be a lot more beneficial in helping you discover, right? What kind of business to start, what focus of an idea you may want from it for an independent career than actually just sitting there waiting, right? You'll be guaranteed if you're looking for a guarantee, in life, you'll be guaranteed that nothing happens <laughs> if you remain where you are, right? You know the reality of that decision. But where you don't know the, the, the possibility of the answers, what could happen, is this other side of your fear, right? This other side of uncertainty and discomfort that can actually lead you to clarify, clar clarifying ideas and being confident in going towards a particular path because you're actually making action and doing something about it. So don't be afraid of failure. Know that the best people with the best ideas have failed more times that they have achieved it. And actually that builds resilience, right? And strength in yourself, that inner strength and inner wisdom that cannot be cultivated unless you went through mistakes or having to backtrack and go somewhere else again. And that's what will happen when you test out new ideas. And know that you can set conditions, as I said, right? Doing it while you're working full time. If you're taking a sabbatical, you have saved up enough money for you to buy that time for yourself. You could take down some of your living costs, right? And look at ways that you are overspending or unnecessary spending to cut down costs in your life to be able to fund some of that uh, experimentations or time off that you may want to acquire in order to achieve some of the goals that you have. All these decisions are beyond your control. But take that driver's seat, take that pilot seat to navigate your flight in your life, right? Because no one else is gonna do it for you. And I know that the more you wait, the more nothing actually happens and that you are absolutely poised and ready to get started today. Now, I hope some of those insights from the three most common limiting beliefs you have to eradicate resonated with you. And I would love to hear from you in, in terms of which three or maybe all of them <laughs> have really been one of the key factors or key elements that have prevented you from taking that leap. So I would love for you to comment below this video. Let me know. I'm sure other people will appreciate they're not alone in the whole thing. And what key mindset piece that I talked about today would you love to eradicate first? And what action will you take instead of waiting in order to pursue your leap? 
and go after the, the career of your dreams. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much again for spending time with me. I'll be back next week with more on the Cubicle Crashing channel, which is right here. And again, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell button to be the first to know when a new video comes up. And if there's anything that I can support you on, if you are ready to take that leap and you would love some guidance in order to do so, uh, book a discovery call with me. Let's have a human to human chat about where you are at, I will give you my honest opinion of where, where, what you can do right now in order to get you to the goals that you dream about. So I can learn first more about your goals and then articulate to you an outline, right? Of what it is that you actually need to be clear on, what plans to put in place in order to go from where you are to where you wanna go. And if we decide to work together, great. If not, you come out of that discovery call with a much more fresh perspective about what's actually necessary in your plan by simplifying it and making it meaningful for you to pursue. Thank you so much for joining me today.